The squash I will share with you today defies the laws of nature, and it might be the only squash you ever need to grow. When most people think squash, they think either summer squash, like zucchini, the Castato Romanesco being one of my all-time favorites, or patty pan squash. The Gelber Englisher Custard squash is a great one. And so is the white scalp squash, an old, super productive Native American variety. On the other hand, when people think squash, they might think winter squash, like the Waltham butternut squash, which is delicious and has good resistance to vine borers. Maybe they think buttercup squash, the bonbon being one of my all-time favorites. Perhaps pumpkins is what pops into your head when you're thinking winter squash, but the squash that I'm going to share with you is something completely different. It goes against the common winter squash, summer squash norm, and it allows you to decide what you want it to be. I plant this squash like any other squash. In spring, I fill my seed cells with potting mix and I plant my seeds, then water them in. After about a week, the seeds should sprout. I suggest you use large seed cells. I use these Vega ones because squash grows quick and you don't want them to get root bound. A couple of weeks after your last expected frost date is a good time to get your seedlings transplanted out. Ideally, you want your plants to have two true leaves. Grab some all-purpose fertilizer and sprinkle it on the surface of your soil, then mix it in. Squash are heavy feeders. Adding this fertilizer will allow them to explode into growth. Then pop your seedlings out of the cell. You can see this plant isn't root bound at all and it's at the perfect stage to transplant out. I also like to inoculate my plants with mycorrhizal fungi when planting. I pop my plant in and lightly press down the soil around it, then water it in. This will make sure that there's no big air gaps in the soil. After about a week, the plant grew significantly. You can see it at the end of the raised bed there. Next, what I do is something you may have never seen before. I spray my plants with surround kaolin clay. I don't have footage of spraying this exact plant, but I will show you on a few other squash that I grew this year. What this clay does is it creates a layer of protection for your plant. It discourages pests from going after your plant, like the cucumber beetle. And I also spray the base of the stem to discourage squash vine borers from attacking my plants. The clay doesn't impede any growth. You can see just a few days later how much the plant has already grown. And here is the original squash I showed you just a few days after spraying with the clay. It's only been 10 days since I transplanted it out. For the next few weeks, I just let the squash grow and do its thing and stayed on top of watering so it had an adequate level of moisture and could grow really well. Notice down here, we got the little boss with us and we made sure we grabbed him a fresh cucumber that we still got growing. Yeah, this guy needs to get paid for all the hard work he does out here. His favorite form of payment is to just snack on some of these cucumbers. Right, boy? Go to town on it. We'll let this guy snack on the cucumber. Make sure you spam some hearts down below if you love seeing the little boss in the videos. Then, as I see my plants start to flower, I like to go by and give them a boost. I put some of my homemade soil in a bucket and grab some fertilizer. Then, I mix some fertilizer into the soil. After that, I take the soil and place it around the base of my squash plants. This will give the squash the nutrition it needs as it starts heading into production. Shortly after that, the plants will start to kick out more squash than you know what to do with. And now that the fruit is ready, it's time to reveal this squash that can be eaten and used as either a summer squash or a winter squash. It lets you decide. As you can see, this squash really likes to sprawl along the ground and grows prolifically. Look at it moving its way through my garden. It has some massive leaves too. Look at the size of these things. And they provide really nice cover for a young dog trying to hide from the sun or even just finding a space to hide out. Right, Boyle? One of the common names is the climbing zucchini. Look at it climbing over my apple tree over there. So vigorous. It's also known as the tromboncino squash, maybe because it's shaped like a trombone. Look at this, and this one over here. If you know it for its Italian roots, you probably know it by the name Zucchino Rampicante. This squash is truly like no other squash. You could harvest it as a summer squash when it's young. Tuck's trying to protect it, I think. Like you see right here, about 12 to 15 inches is ideal. We'll cut this off. 
and you could cook it up like you would a zucchini. You could just saute it and it has a nice, slightly nutty flavor like the Castano Romanesco does, relatively mild and overall it's just delicious when you use it as a summer squash like this. It has a nice tender texture to it. It has a nice little crisp when it's raw and I haven't really tried them raw that many times so let's see if it actually tastes good raw. Let's, let's get a bite. Mm. Really, really good flavor. Packed with water, relatively mild, a little more mild than the zucchini is. Overall, absolutely fantastic flavor. I mean, you can't beat a squash like this. You can see how juicy it is on the inside. You could also let the fruit get larger and mature and use it as a winter squash. You can see these things get absolutely massive and there's so many on the plant. I'll show you in just a little bit. As it matures, the flavor deepens and the flesh becomes denser. When they ripen, they get a tan orange-like color to them and are great for baking and pies and are often used for stuffing gnocchi and raviolis. When used as a winter squash, the fruit will last for so long it's unbelievable. I grew this last year and took a few from inside and used them over the winter. One I saved and it stayed good all winter long and by the time I transplanted out my Zucchino Rampicante this year, the fruit from last year was still good. You can essentially have a never ending supply of squash with this incredible and versatile plant. Another thing I like about the Zucchino Rampicante that some people may not like is that it heads into heavy production later than some of the other squash plants. For instance, the Gelber English or Custard Squash that only takes about 50 days from seed to harvest, while the Zucchino Rampicante takes about 70 days. I find that to be a relatively good thing though, because when some of your other squash plants are starting to slow down and give up, like the Custard Squash or any other patty pan squash or maybe the Castara Romanesco, those are slowing down, this thing hits its full stride and it kicks out so much fruit, it's literally hard to keep up with. Just look at this plant. You saw the two I harvested already. There's a big one right here. Peek over there. There's another one just over there. Swing to your left. There's more off this one plant. And then come over here. This thing is growing underneath the apple tree and there's three more squash right here. I mean, it's tough to keep up with how much food this thing kicks out and it grows so prolifically late in the season. Again, some of the other squash are quitting. They might have issues with some of the vine borers. This thing just never stops kicking out food. It's pretty evident that this plant takes up a lot of space. Look at it just growing throughout my whole garden. And this is only one plant. It has no problem climbing up and over anything. Look at it growing on this apple tree. It doesn't seem to be bothering the apples that much though. Still getting nice production out of this honey crisp apple right here. So make sure if you plant this, you do have a good amount of space. Part of me wonders why this plant isn't more popular for backyard gardeners. Because it's easy to grow, it's prolific, the fruit is delicious, it's multifunctional, and it rarely has any pest or disease issues. I wonder if it's something maybe like farmers don't want us to know about because they know we'll grow it and it's so easy to grow. Or maybe grocery stores don't want us to know about it because uh, it's really popular in specialty markets. It's super sought after, I read. So I just wonder why a lot of us aren't growing this incredible versatile fruit. It's, uh, it's such a game changer in your garden, especially if you had issues in the past growing uh, some zucchini or some summer squash. The reason for that is it's more closely related to like a butternut squash and this species, like the butternut squash, they are more resistant to your squash vine borers and a lot of the other pests too, like the cucumber beetles. That's one of the reasons it can grow so well late into the season. When I started growing this squash variety, I, like it was a few years ago, I was just blown away at how much it took over my garden. It's like a pumpkin which takes over the garden so much, but this thing, you can use it in so many different ways. So I think it's a higher value crop than something like the pumpkin. And if you know some Italian grandmas or something, I'm sure, or I guess anyone Italian, they would love some of this squash. It's, uh, 
It's such an incredible plant and it's just hilarious when you see this. I mean, it's fun to grow things that look this odd, but sometimes when things look odd and they look cool, they don't taste good. This one bucks that trend and it's uh, overall just such a fun thing to grow. You have to get some planted next year if you've never grown it before. It's one of the unbeatable squashes. Want a summer squash? Plant this. Want a winter squash? Plant this. Maybe that's one of the reasons we don't see it in food stores as much. Probably because it doesn't fit in one of those summer squash or winter squash typical categories. It has its own category and that's one of the coolest things about it I think. Notice down here, this is a squash that I planted early in the year, the Castato Romanesco. Look how much damage it has from some of the vine borers and stuff. A bit unfortunate, but the plant is stu still doing relatively well. And that's because I go by and I bury the stem in the ground so it reroots and it kind of has a second form of life. You could see some beautiful zucchini on here. And look at the bees having fun working. One just flew in there, he's hiding out. Another thing you could do I'll show you right over here, is plant a second round of squash. That's what I did. In like early August, I planted another round of zucchini. You can see this one doesn't have any vine borer damage because I planted this after the vine borers like are finished laying a lot of their eggs. You'll notice though, it's got a good amount of powdery mildew that's developing on it as the weather's getting cooler. Even though the new leaves look beautiful, the Zucchino Rampicante has better resistance to the powdery mildew and a lot of the other pest and disease issues. So again, it's an incredible squash to grow if you have had problems in the past growing some of the summer squashes and stuff. But if you use some of the tips that I shared you, like spraying it with the surround kale and clay, the summer squash, that should help you to be able to grow some of the typical summer squash too, if that's what you want. Me, I like growing all the different kinds. I have enough space, so I'm fortunate that I can do that. But if you want to try to like trellis a squash and only grow one, I think it's such a unique and really cool thing that you could grow one squash and choose whether it's a summer or a winter. It puts the option in your own hands. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck hope that we unlocked a new variety of squash for you to grow. One that is so productive and if you have had issues growing other squash in the past, maybe this can be the one which give you, gives you the harvest that you've always been hoping for. And we hope that we did it some justice. And we just think it's something everyone should be growing in their own backyard. It's so awesome, but I did fail a little bit this year in the fact that I didn't have this thing trellised over the top of my whole entire trellis. One of the reasons I didn't is because of this hazelnut tree right here. It's shading out this section a little bit. So the Zucchino Rampicante wanted to grow towards the light in that direction, looking for the light. And it's starting to come back to the trellis here. But in the future, I'm going to try to grow it on a trellis so I can have them all hanging down. I think that would just look so awesome. And the little boss, we got him out here. It's a nice day for him. It's cool. He's chilling. He had his cucumber. He's content. He's happy. Don't forget to spam the hearts down low for the little boss. We wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Catherine Korn. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing and growing back here. If you want to be a part of Team Grow, all you have to do is get a garden going. Then encourage other people to grow. And then they can encourage other people to grow. That's how Team Grow becomes this compounding and exponentially growing thing where you grow, you share with someone, they share with someone else, and we're all growing a better future together. The team expands and grows and spreads out just like a Zucchino Rampicante does. We take our lessons from nature, we learn from them, and then we incorporate them into our lives because as the old saying goes, the forest is the classroom and nature is the teacher. We had a blast out here. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Sharing truly helps uh, the channel, but it also helps grow more gardens everywhere in the world. And our goal is to have a, a garden in every person's backyard. That's what it's all about. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We out.